Fran's Memory Machine is an ongoing analog series on YouTube. I want to say that it's horror, but to confine it to that one category seems wrong. So I'm just going to say that it has heavy horror aspects. A lot of the uploads from Fran leave you feeling like confused or uneasy. And as of uploading this video, Fran's YouTube page has 23 videos on it. So all of the theories in this video will be derived from the information in those first 23. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to check out this video, and please subscribe for more content similar to this. Fran's memory machine is difficult to describe. Most of the videos she has uploaded are extremely short, uh, most of them being between 30 seconds to a minute. Each video utilizes a multitude of different creative styles, from 2D animation to stop motion and live action. Uh, this is going to be a wild ride, so um, hang with me until the end when we break everything down. Natural Causes is the first upload from Fran. The video shows a compilation of various shots. A girl doll, trees outside, and the confines of a nondescript room. Fran does use a lot of music from around the internet, so just for monetization's sake, I won't be playing much of the audio. Uh, but playing behind these images in this video is a piano track. One important moment in this video is a shot of an illustrated woman waking up. She is laying in bed and has long flowing hair. I don't know if this is Fran, but I have a theory, so for now we will refer to her as Fran. As the video ends, we fade to the dark painted image of a mangled face. The face is somewhat doll-like. Its smiling mouth is sewn shut. I think it's fitting that we are beginning with shots of a doll, as dolls are usually associated with children. Assuming that Fran is older, it's fitting that we would start at the beginning, her childhood. The next video is called Mr. Therapist and features a new character named, well, you probably guessed it, Mr. Therapist. Like the macabre looking doll face in the end of the previous episode, Mr. Therapist is presented as a very dark, creepy looking face. He speaks in a deep, gravelly tone and states that we must be feeling down before trying to cheer us up with some type of pink squeeze toy. He tells us that the toy will always be with us before he disappears into the black background. The video then ends. Splinters begins with an obscured sketch. I can't quite make out what it is, but it reminds me of the drawing of Fran from the first video. I get this mostly from what appears to be long, flowing hair. A piece of the paper the sketch is drawn on is then torn away, before the camera pans into the dark hole. Inside we see a yellow flower, a skyline, and more dolls. The video ends with a sketch of a smiling Fran. She is happy and content. While most of Fran's uploads don't have much to their descriptions, this one reads, when you fall asleep or drift into thought, you can only see distant splinters of the day in your mind. What we are seeing in this video, this collage of images, are in fact the splinters that Fran is referring to. Do You Ever Just features two bunny characters. They are talking with one another. The one bunny saying hello to the other before asking it, do you ever just... Their sentence then trails off and we cut to video footage of a house. We are then given a shot of a new pixelated character. Their grin is positioned in a smile, but their overall face looks as if they're in pain. We then see a wolf-like creature devouring something. I'm not sure if it's an animal or a human, but I would assume it would be the latter given the fingers that we are able to see. We then end with a still pond as a swan gracefully floats across it. These splinters are a little more difficult to put together, but I will say moving forward that the image of the wolf character may have some importance in putting together the bigger picture. Can we please go back is the fifth upload from Fran. This video, like the one before it, has two characters talking to one another. 
These characters appear to be human. They wear hoods that have a set of ears, reminiscent of the bunnies that we just saw. The one figure appears to be older, almost like a grandmother of sorts, while the other one is younger. The older one says, I am so sorry. The younger one replies, can we please go back? Of course, says the older looking figure. We then cut to live action footage of a full moon through some bare tree branches. A couple of things to note about this video. It takes place on the edge of a forest during sunset. The sunset, or dusk, is a prominent theme throughout much of Fran's memories. Growing Pains is the title of the next entry, and it's a very important one. It starts off with various shots of a building, perhaps a house of some sort, but cuts away to interiors that look more like that of a banquet hall. We then see two silhouettes. One is tall and the other is short. The tall figure towers over the short figure, staring down at them as the short figure cries. We then get a closer look at the short figure's face, or should I say lack thereof. I believe that this character is Fran, as told by her signature flowing hair. We watch as she transforms from a young girl to a grown woman. Her image then fades to that of what I perceive to be a lamb albeit a, a strange looking one. We then cut to text that reads, I wish I could comfort you. The video then ends. This entry, unlike some of the others to come, is packed full with telling details. I think the little girl crying is Fran. She was once innocent, like a lamb, but then she grows to become an adult. The text that reads, I wish I could comfort you, is the older, current version of Fran speaking to her younger self, the short, crying girl who she once was. The reason I perceive the animal shown to be that of a lamb is because lambs are often associated with innocence and purity, much like children. A natural predator to a lamb is a wolf, which we saw in the previous entry. Perhaps the wolf is the antithesis of the lamb, adulthood, corruption, loss of innocence. Why else would Fran be on this journey through her memories? Vital begins with a page from a book. The top of the page reads Old St. Paul's. Old St. Paul's is a book from 1841, which follows the role of a cathedral, St. Paul's, which housed many sick people during the Great Plague of London. Placed above the book is an illustration of Fran. She appears to be upset. Her face is then interspliced with that of a smiling face. The smile, as a common theme, appears to be almost painful. It is forced out of Fran. The video ends with a shot of a backyard and the words, Don haunt me. Remember before I mentioned that dusk is a prevalent theme in Fran's work? Well, a bulk of Fran's memories stem from the sun setting. Don Haunt Me clearly tells us that the start of a new day is something that weighs heavy on Fran. I'm not exactly sure if the reading of Old St. Paul's has any dire meaning here, but it could deal with the idea of purity being corrupted. For example, a church being pure and then overcrowded with the weary and the sick. Either way, I don't think it's a coincidence that it's shown here. Scaredy Pants begins with another montage, or splinters, of Fran's memories. Green trees, passing fields, and even what appears to be the ceiling of a cathedral or a church. As the camera pans around the cathedral, we get a voice and text that reads, Oh, you scaredy pants. I think it stands to reason that our main setting, or Fran's childhood, most likely took place in a rural setting. She has many memories of nature as opposed to more urban areas. One of the final shots is of a field during what time of day? You guessed it, nearly sundown. The image is then obscured with a contorted figure who remarks, it's okay to feel bad. A strange snowman character is shown replying to the figure with, really, before the video then ends. Of everything in this video, the ceiling of the cathedral is the most confusing. 
it juxtaposed with the scaredy pants question leads me to believe that Fran may have had some negative memories associated with religion or perhaps even getting older and dying. Blueprints for Better Days begins with a character telling Fran that it is time to touch some grass. She seems excited by this. We see then splinters of blue sky, green fields, and what I assume are Fran's friends in various stores and shopping centers. The description of this video reads, a tribute to one of the happiest memories I have. The title, Blueprint for Better Days, makes sense given Fran's nostalgic attitude towards the subject matter. This, unfortunately, seems to be a diamond in the rough moment for Fran, whereas most of her memories are centered around negative emotions. Here, she displays some that are not. Good Ol' Martin takes us in the opposite direction. The video begins with a doll-like, yet robotic-looking figure, who takes a character with two pointy ears to a dark, seemingly endless room. I believe this pointy-eared character is Fran, but that's sort of a shot in the dark. The doll robot tells Fran to look in the distance. We then see a distorted face, a face I can only attribute to the title character, Martin. Despite his grotesque appearance, Fran does not seem distressed. It's almost as if she is well acquainted with this figure. It's not someone she wants to be around, but someone she knows is a constant in her life. Sort of like when you go to a family reunion and see a family member you always argue with, but you only see them that one time of the year. In the beginning of the video, we hear the doll robot character tell Fran, Hush, we are here. This gives off the indication that this character is somewhat of a guide for Fran, similar to what Virgil is to Dante as he guides him through the levels of hell. Joffrey Birdie marks the first time Fran uses a title card reading Fran's memory machine in her videos. Not sure if that has any significance to our breakdown, but it marks a change in her editing. Joffrey Birdie, to me at least, is told from the perspective of a small child playing in their room. There is a lion-like creature that has the face of a human. It speaks to a small bird, assumingly Joffrey, who peeks out of a dresser drawer. It is then shown that Joffrey is being held in the palm of a large skeleton. A thin stream of smoke then fans out from underneath a shelf. The video ends as the lion-like creature, now with a different face, stares at us before making a strange, unsettling noise. The only significance I pulled from this entry was from that of the skeleton character. More on that later. Evening walk is difficult to make out at first. It shows a pair of feet walking down what appears to be some sort of dark alleyway. Music echoes in the background accompanied by the sound of the footsteps. An illustrated face of Fran is then shown. We then cut to see the feet approach the side of a car. The illustrated face then appears to melt. A mysterious skyline is shown before a puppet dangles on its strings. This video is one of the more unsettling ones. While most of Fran's work comes off as sort of just uncanny, this one feels a little bit more tangible. It's hard to explain. We are never given a view of who is in the car speaking with Fran, or if she ever got in the car or anything like that. All we can assume is that the encounter, during an evening walk, has stuck with Fran in present time. Getting up shows a character sleeping in bed. Their tired eyes slowly begin to open, revealing a mysterious, faceless figure standing over them. The figure seems to torment the sleeping character. Perhaps this is a nightmare. However, given Fran's distaste for the dawn, I believe this is a personification of her fear of a new day. The video ends as the sleeping character closes its eyes once again. How Sad, How Lovely is set to a song of the same name. It features Fran silhouetted as she stares out into the setting sun. The wind blows through her hair, and she is deep in thought. How sad, how lovely 
is an album and song by musician Connie Converse. The lyrics read, How sad, how lovely, how short, how sweet, to see the sunset at the end of the street, and the day gathered into a single light, and the shallows rising from the brim of the night. I immediately think back to Fran's comment, Don, haunt me. July package begins with the dark skyline of a city. A street light turns on, illuminating a door at the end of an alley. The door has a slot that opens up, revealing a pair of eyes. They stare down at the package in the front door. It is revealed that the pair of eyes belong to a bunny-type character. They breathe steadily as they stare at the mysterious package. We then cut to what is assumingly inside the box, a few dolls. We then cut to an airplane view of the clouds in the sky. This video is interesting because up until now, Fran has showcased most childhood related things in a positive light. While we don't see the bunny's reaction to the dolls, the combination of the music and the dark imagery certainly paints them as if they are meant to be feared. Dormant Shore opens with the waves crashing on a beach. Nearby grass blows in the wind as the silhouette of a person is shown before disappearing. We then see a 3D rendering of a pale white face. They stare upwards and look as if they are in pain or discomfort. Splinters pass by and show a myriad of things we have seen before. But what stands out in this portion is of a dark night and a shadowy figure. I can't say for certain but I think this image might be directly interlinked with the evening walk that Fran took before she came across the car. There is an evident struggle happening here with the pale-faced figure. It's as if they are trying to fight off intrusive thoughts. The dark alley is juxtaposed next to warm splinters of a fall scarecrow and the electric lines beneath blue skies. The video ends as we see a blank gray room before the sound of a light switch goes off. Body Loners begins with a question. Is your old body getting in the way of doing household chores? Well, perhaps someone could loan you a body. This message is heard by a lamb, who appears to be interested in this offering. However, the lamb's interest is interrupted when a book placed behind her laptop is home to the paper police. These paper cutout figures tell the lamb that body loaning is illegal. The lamb denies doing such a thing. What is interesting about this entry is the reintroduction to imagery containing a lamb. In this context, we see body loaning as a physical thing, but in context to Fran's issues, it is more than likely a mental desire to change. As she is getting older, she is having thoughts that are less than pleasant. I believe she seeks to remedy this by potentially getting another body with perhaps a more well-functioning mind. Channels on the Telebox shows a television screen. We flip through each of the channels, some of them appearing to be random shows, while others look familiar, like Fran sitting on the edge of a river. We then see a pixelated face that looks very similar to something we've already seen before. Remember Martin and his signature one eye open? He asks us if we want to watch a movie. The lamb stuffed animal from before nods its head yes. We then watch as the lamb is quickly dragged off camera. A mouse cursor then hovers over a movie review site. The lamb leaves a review that says, I am deaf and have constant dreams of the movie. Now yet it was very entertaining, incredibly enjoyable. Would highly recommend if you don't value your ability to sleep or hear, you need a good laugh. The overall rating is redacted, however, but we can see the lamb in a profile picture below the review. The lamb's name is Hamius. The main thing I take from this episode is that Martin continues to be a dark, imposing figure. It also makes me think back to when I would watch TV late at night and I would be watching Cartoon Network until it switched over to Adult Swim. The change was often confusing, like I was seeing something that was never meant to be seen. 
One, two, three of me shows two figures staring out at, you guessed it, a setting sun. One of the figures appears to be wearing a cowboy hat. They kiss as they stare out at the setting sun. We are given a shot of a cardboard rendition of the sun. However, despite its beautiful colors and warmth, it appears to be ghastly. A small flower placed behind the couple looks up at us at one point and gives us a wink. This video, like some of the previous, is named after and features a song. One Two Three of Me is a song by Black Moth Super Rainbow. The lyrics are only a couple lines long. They read, We're standing in a field, and the sun is all we feel. If you'll just come with me, a sunflower is what I'll be. Buried House is actually the first friend video I was recommended to watch. It shows a mannequin head of sorts. It appears to be wearing makeup and lacks any hair on the top of its head. It is placed against a purple wall. Its eyes appear to be closed before shooting open. Text at the bottom reads, I'm unraveling. We then see a music box of a ballerina dancer as it spins around. The video then ends. What stands out to me about this video is the title, Buried House. Because we're talking about memories and streams of consciousness, I don't think Fran is speaking of a literal buried house. Instead, I think she is referring to spots of her memory that, up until now, she has buried for one reason or another. Despite 123 of me being a rather beautiful video, Buried House is much more haunting. After watching it, we can understand why Fran has buried it. A Guest for Mr. Spider is a take on an already pre-existing story. We see a dark room before a door opens up, revealing light behind it. A shadowy figure comes into view. This emergence of light wakes up Mr. Spider, who looks at the figure. It turns out this figure is a fly. In its arms is a box with what appears to be a cake in it. The text then reads, Mr. Spider doesn't like it. The screen cuts to black before we see the door once again, except this time it is illuminated. Lying before the door is a trail of blood. This is where the video ends. However, this is not the traditional ending of the story. In the latter half, we see Mr. Spider being visited by a multitude of different fly-like creatures. Mr. Spider is shown to be growing fatter and fatter, having presumably eaten all of these visitors. By the end of it, the spider is sad because he wishes for another visitor to come see him, but he has eaten everyone who ever would. This story is derived from the Magnus Archives, which is a horror fiction podcast. As of uploading this video, It Is Narrow Here is the final upload on Fran's memory machine. The video shows a long, dark corridor. Sitting up against one of the walls is a decaying creature. It has no eyes, and its skin is wrinkled. It whispers in a low, gravelly voice, that it is narrow here. We then pan over to reveal that there is a door in the corridor. It is open and we see a flash for a moment of a live action hallway in a house. We then cut back to the door. Inside it is a doll with a piece of paper in its hand reading Fran's memory machine. I think that in this particular house, wherever here is, may quite possibly be the house referred to in the Buried House video. While there is no correlating imagery between the two to back this up, the atmosphere is scarcely similar. The dread is almost palpable. This is a place that Fran does not want to be. It is claustrophobic, almost as if the dark walls will smother you. That brings us to the end of the journey that is Fran's memory machine, or for now at least. I think that it's a lot to take in, so I'll do my best to compose my thoughts and theories in a way that is easy to understand. 
I think in terms of story, Fran's memory machine is not and was not meant to tell a traditional linear story. I mean linear as in a beginning, middle, and end. Instead, given the nature of the work and the idea of going back to visit one's memories, it can only be expressed as a stream of consciousness. Next time you're laying in bed trying to fall asleep, try and be conscious of all of the thoughts and feelings that come and go. A lot of them, at least for me, probably don't make a lot of sense. Now, that's not to say that Fran's memory machine lacks anything because it doesn't have a traditional story. I think its themes are very prevalent. Fran is an older woman in this story, using some sort of memory machine to go back and relive her childhood and adolescence. A lot of us find ourselves helplessly nostalgic for times where we were young, carefree, and without so much responsibility. While we see many happy moments in Fran's life, her journey inadvertently takes us to dark moments as well. This first manifests itself in Mr. Therapist. The therapist, which is meant to help those in need, is presented as a dark, foreboding figure, because in Fran's mind, she associates the therapist with dark times in her life. As a result, he is depicted as monstrous. A major theme in Fran's work is the passage of time, specifically dawn and dusk. This would make sense given that Fran is presumably taking this journey as an older version of herself. She knows that with each day that goes by, she is getting further and further away from those memories that she is using the machine to get back to. Think of the way that she says, can we please go back? She doesn't want the day to come to an end. She hates the dawn because it is the start of a new day. She doesn't like time progressing. And naturally, with time progressing comes the idea of death. This theme is not so much present in Fran's work, aside from the skeleton who holds Joffrey Birdie in its palm. A major detail that I haven't mentioned yet, and purposely, is that Fran, the girl behind this series, is only 17 years old. She is in the latter half of her teenage years, literally teetering on the edge of childhood and adulthood. And who better to tell a story of this internal battle than someone who is currently living it. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this video. If you would like to see more from this series, make sure you visit Fran's YouTube channel, which I'll link down in the description below, and please subscribe to Something Sinister for more content such as this. I hope you all have a wonderful week, and thank you for tuning in.